Hi drummers, hope you're well. Just a quick one for you here. I guess this is beginner to intermediate drummers, but applies to whoever wants to listen to this. This is about separating your right stick and your right foot when you're playing your grooves on the drums, or in other words, your hi-hat hand and your bass drum foot. Uh, when you get to a certain point on the drums, uh, in your journey, so to speak, in your development, you start playing grooves where the bass drum goes in between the hi-hats as well as with it, uh, or the ride cymbal or the floor tom, whatever you're using is like the ride surface. I'm going to do it as the hi-hat here. And you start playing grooves that sound a bit like this. I made a video yesterday about Immigrant Song, right? The groove from Immigrant Song by Led Zeppelin. And that was a perfect example. And these grooves come in in the grade level thing uh, around grade three and get more complex from there. Now, something people ask all the time is, or, or, or articulate in various ways is, like my, my, my hi-hat hand and my bass drum foot instinctively go together. People say phrases like, I struggle to separate them. Uh, lots of channel members who have their face-to-face uh, -face and Zoom sessions, they ask about this, like, what can I do to help them separate? I find it difficult. Yesterday, uh, um, a viewer called uh, Keith Moon uh, said, uh, it comes in, it's so hard to make the bass drum go between the hi-hat since sometimes I end up mimicking the bass drum pattern with my hi-hat. And it's a common thing that I guess in particular beginner to intermediate drummers ask about all the time. And I'm just going to go through a few things uh, just from my perspective, having learnt the drums and gone through grades and that kind of stuff, I guess, but also being a drum teacher for many years. Uh, the main thing is almost everybody, and it's only human nature, almost everybody tries to go too fast. And I, like, it's time for some real talk because I, I've, of course, did this. Almost every drummer I've ever met and ever worked with does this because it's like, it's just instinctive. You hear a groove, you hear a drummer playing. And you think, all right, boom, ba, ba, boom, boom, ba. So it makes sense. Of course, I'm going to try to play it like that. The thing is, you've got to earn this thing and you've got to build it. My experience, just to put this out there, my experience of building grooves like this up, uh, I played grooves like this, I guess in grade three, after a couple of years of practicing pretty solidly. I would think, if I'm remembering my, rightly, my experience though was that it was five years plus of like regular, daily, specific and deliberate practice on stuff like this where I started to feel comfortable doing it. Needless to, I mean, I've been playing the drums for about 30 years now. Needless to say, it's still a work in progress for me. But my experience was about five years plus of, of regular, you know, again, deliberate practice on stuff like this before, it started, before I started to feel confident playing, for example... those kind of things, the bum bum bum, before I started feeling confident with that. So I really want to put that out at the start because I think people are just wildly confused. People always very often put forward this idea of talent. People say, oh, I'm, I'm not sure why I can't get it. And people have been doing it for like two weeks. It seem confused that they can't get it. So I think, I don't know, I don't want to go into some tangent about where we're at as a society and, you know, what, like the sense of entitlement that some people bring to things. But, you know, here it's completely cool that this is something you find difficult at first. There's no, there's, as far as I'm concerned, there's absolutely zero expectation that a drummer would be able to play these sorts of grooves cleanly after a few weeks or maybe even a few months. In my experience, it was you just, you just had to build it and build it and build it for, again, people, I'm sure people get really smooth at it much faster than I did but my experience was I would say five to ten years before I really felt confident playing it on a gig in a relaxed fashion at whatever tempo came up you know I would say five to ten years was my experience now the the most important thing and it's just so goofy and so obvious and every drum teacher in the world says it but my experience is very few people actually do it like actually act on this advice is go very very slowly Let, let's take this groove right let's work with this groove Because I think for people at a certain point, like grade two into grade three level, that's the point where people start saying, oh, I'm struggling with this, I find this hard, I'm finding that my right stick or whatever stick you're playing the hi-hat with is, is going with the with the bass drum foot. I think that that's the that's a great example of the sort of groove where that starts to, starts to happen. Now, for me, the big thing is we have to slow down. And the reason we have to slow down is 
what I witnessed people doing all over the place, and I can relate to this when I was younger as well, is I witnessed people trying to learn, trying to perform the thing before they've actually truly learned it. They try and basically miss out the bit where you actually learn. You've got to pay your dues here. You've got to earn the right to play this well. Uh, my least favorite phrase, you'll notice if you watch this channel much, is people say, I'm struggling with this. I'm strugg- I've been doing this for, you know, the, over the last week and I'm really struggling with it. So my, in my opinion, in my experience, I can only speak from my own point of view, and I've definitely used that phrase as well in the past, is struggling almost always, not always, I can't speak for everybody out there, but almost always when people say I'm struggling, what they're articulating is the feeling that we get when we're trying to perform something at a speed or a level of complexity or whatever that is currently unreasonable based on the work that we've done to get us up, you know, to, to that point at the minute. So, if you've been practicing this for a, f- a few weeks and you're trying to play it fast and you say, I'm struggling with it, you're not struggling with it, in my opinion. You just haven't practiced it enough yet to get to that point. You just haven't earned the right to expect to play it well at that point. That's fine. You just got to do some more work, man. So this is playing a musical instrument and it's a big deal. And uh, I think this is, again, something just in my experience, not everybody, but often people were confused about. I definitely didn't fully understand this when I took up the drums. Uh, it's a big thing, right? And it's a big uh, endeavor and it's something big in your life and getting good at playing like smooth bass drums like this is something that will take considerable uh, again only in my I can only speak from my own experience will take cons- a considerable effort and investment of effort and time over years to get good at it just to be super clear because again people just seem so confused people say well I just don't un-. every day I hear somebody say I just don't understand why I'm not getting this and they'll watch me play something and they'll say well I don't understand why why I can't get it and they've been doing it for two weeks or one week or like a few days or a, a few months it, it, it takes a considerable amount of, amount of time and Again, I can only repeat because I just think it's so important. I just end up saying this to people every day, every day. Uh, for me, like five plus years of consistent, like daily practice, for me anyway, was to the point where I started feel comf- to feel comfortable playing grooves like this. This is the process that I would use of breaking it down. And this is only one example, of course, this groove. Uh, but this is what I would use. So again, we're playing this this groove here. I would go very, very slowly and I would just play the first of those. Now, on the channel members page, I'll put, uh, I think I'll do this in three different levels and I'll put the notation and a practice along version for each of these different levels. Now, the first level will be this. We're going to just play the first of those three quick notes, you know, when it goes ba bum bum. Now, this first bass drum of the ba bum bum is the one that goes in between the hi hats. So, when, when you play the groove, right? One and two and a uh, three and four and so it's a three and that's the count of your bass drum the a uh is the one that goes in between the hi-hats it doesn't coincide with the hi-hat it goes in between the hi-hats the other two actually sync up with the hi-hat don't they so what we're going to do here is just play the first bass drum of those three one and two and a uh, three and four and one and two and a uh, three and and but what we're going to do is we're going to do it unbelievably slowly and when you first do this your only objective and people often think say things like oh, i haven't got time to do this like i you know i don't have the patience to do this well you don't get to be good at it then you know like you've got to take this thing seriously for it to work honestly like if you want to play well it, it i can only repeat it's a big thing and it's a it's an investment of your time and effort. The reward is totally worth it, in my opinion. It's an awesome thing to build up. But you don't get this for free, man. You have to you have to earn this. And actually, my experience of doing this is this is, although it feels like it's taking ages, this is the fastest way to actually improve at your instrument, right? So we're going to go really slow. And your only aim at first, I was saying, is just to play the right notes in the right order. That's all we care about. The tempo is completely irrelevant at this point okay don't be fooled people this is a dangerous idea this unhelpful nasty little idea of talent people put forward all the time oh i knew i wasn't talented i knew i couldn't get this it's nonsense you build it earn it do you understand this is what you've got to do so we're going to go really slow here and your only aim in this first case is to present your brain and your hands and your feet with the right notes in the right order so one and two and it's this moment and uh Three and four and let's go again. One and two and a uh, three 
and four and so I'm going to play this a bit faster just for context we're playing this one and two and a three and four and one and two and a three and four and so we're, we're dropping that first bass drum in, in between the hi-hats on the uh of beat two. One and two and uh. If you go too fast at first, like our friend Keith Moon said, you'll probably find this. One and two and uh three and four. One and two and uh three and four. For almost everybody, definitely did for me. Instinctively, your right stick or your hi-hat stick will go with your bass drum foot. It's just instinctive. So just go slow. Even that moment, that moment, you've got to rehearse that over and over. So, one, and two, and a uh, three. That moment where you go hi-hat, bass, hi-hat, you gotta run that, you gotta let your hands and your feet and your brain see it. And this is where the value, in my opinion, and again in my experience, the value of deliberate, regular, and consistent practice simply cannot be under understated like well overstated sorry it can't be overstated so what people do is they go oh yeah i did this for a bit but i haven't really actually played for a while because i've been i've been away i've been doing this oh actually then, then my work was busy well you're not going to be good at playing then the, the drums honestly like if you've, you've got to find a way here if you want to be good at something you've got to find a way to put the time in on this like it's and it doesn't have to be like hours and hours but you do need to be consistent with with a skill like this anyway i, I just from my perspective, I don't consider myself a natural at playing the drums or anything like that. I don't think that many people really are. All, all these sort of skills you just build basically by with repetition. But that's the point. Like the value of that repetition cannot be overstated. And people, you know, just people who've been doing this for a bit and they take a break and they come and they say, well, I don't know why I'm still not getting it. I don't know why. It's because you haven't been consistent enough. Each day you've got to sit in your kit, you've got to rehearse it, your brain, your hands, your feet, your nervous system have got to experience this, those neural connections have got to form, they've got to solidify, myelination, that beautiful laying down of that uh, chemical myelin, uh, insulating the neural connections in your nervous system as you, as you learn these grooves needs to take place and needs to be reinforced and reinforced and reinforced, you need to be deliberate and consistent, it's okay if you can't practice consistently but then don't expect to be good and please don't then say i'm struggling with this i'm finding this hard and i don't know why like understand again again i can only repeat this is learning a drums learning the drums is a big thing and is a, a, a serious undertaking and without a serious approach to it you won't get the results that you want i can't be any more uh, you know clear about that. that's how I, how I see it and it's cool like i'm not forcing anybody to do anything like if you don't want to put that time in and get good at something cool great you could go and do whatever you want to do but if you are going to do this thing my best advice would be would if you've decided to do this thing and you want to build up skills like you've got to you've got to find the time you've got to throw yourself at it man otherwise you're on a road to disappoint to disappointment you're on a road to a negative uh, feeling about this thing it for me it, it works in one of two ways either you're very casual and you just play and you don't mind whether you're you know developing or not or you are serious about it and uh, you're going at it and you are finding the time to be deliberate and consistent and if you, that middle is just horrible it's just messy that's where negative feeling comes in that's where people feel disappointed people say oh, I'm struggling I'm losing my way I don't, you know, I don't know why I'm not getting this it's just that horrible middle of like people not really doing this anyway let's get back to it so we're one and two and a uh, three so this is like level one of three on this groove one Again, even if that little moment where the bass drum drops, so one and two, this bit, and uh, three. Slow, deliberate, show your brain. Like those neural connections, you can't cheat nature. Those neural connections have to be formed and have to be reinforced and have to solidify. You might do that for a week, you might do that for two weeks, you might do that for a month, and this is where you need, uh, in my opinion, to develop your skill on the drums. You need that just bloody mindedness to some extent you just need to dig in man you need to actually want this like properly want it otherwise you're probably not going to do it you need to really dig in there and say right I'm not, this isn't necessarily the most enjoyable thing in the world at this point but I'm building this thing man I'm, I'm in this I've, I'm emotionally committing to this I'm deciding in my heart I want to be good at this and I am paying the price I'm paying my dues I'm earning the right to play this well at this point and have the faith that it'll come good and it will after a period of time after a week, two weeks, a month, six months, whatever, when you start feeling confident with, you can put the next bass drum in. This is gonna be one and two and a three and, and 
Again, we go super slow. One and two and a uh, three and four and. If you need to, just say the combinations out loud. Hi hat, kick drum, both together. One and two. Hi hat, kick, both and four and one and and a uh, three and go even slower i know it's not very fun at this point i know it's not what you might envisage when you thought of flying around the drums and a uh, three and four and but that's how you get good at it patience show your brain the stuff and your brain will do the work for you man if you present it with the right information my experience of doing this job for many many years is that the vast majority of people the vast majority of people simply do not do that. Simply are unwilling to break it down and show their brain one beat at a time. They'd, they'd rather tell themselves a story about other people who are more talented than them or tell themselves a story that they haven't got time or tell themselves whatever other nonsense they want rather than actually go to work, like rather than spit on their hands and go to work. So that's, what, that's where it's at. And real slow, this is stage two. One and two and a uh, three and in this example, as slow as you like, say the combinations out loud. That might be another week, might be another two weeks, might be another six months, might be another whatever, who cares? But when you, when you get to a point where you're feeling And it might well be that it just doesn't sit. I mean, my experience, like I said several times already, my experience was it was about five years for me before that even did start to sit and feel comfortable. But at some point, you can then start to add in the third one. This third one in this case is actually in sync with the next hi-hat with the uh, one and two and a three and the and of beat three. So this one shouldn't be as challenging. One and two and a three and four. And so real slow. One and two and a uh, on its own three and four and so program it in one and two hi-hat kick both both snare i'll play it a bit faster for context and two and three and four one and two and a three and four and so that's the process. And again, I can't repeat this enough times. So I just say this over and over again to people. My experience is the vast majority of people either underestimate the, the, the amount of that that's involved or just simply don't want to do it or are unwilling or again, would rather tell themselves a story about it's because I'm not talented or it's because I don't have the ability. It's because there's something wrong with me. It's because I'm not very good at this, whatever. Like if you want to be good at it, that's what you do, man. And whether you choose the path of, all right, I'm actually not going to put that effort in. I'm not going to do that process and cool I, I, I understand that I don't get to be good at this or I am going to absolutely throw in and commit to that I understand there'll be a little process of it not being a period of time which in my case was about five years of not being very good at it but bit by bit chipping away at it and it's starting to come good uh, with that gradual deliberate consistent repetition and that will result in fluency in the end uh, remember the middle ground is a no-no for me the middle ground is territory I, I would never want to get into personally which is that kind of thing of i can do it a bit but i haven't really done i haven't really done the work commit one way or the other man poo or get off the potty because it like unhappiness is it is the other is the third option so be be cool with not being able to do it uh be cool with the work and slowing it down and being consistent and deliberate over a period of time which in my experience was years or be cool with being unhappy I don't, who, who would be so like i would say pick one of those two, two ways right either be cool with not being able to do it or be cool with the work pick like pick which and i heard this somebody say this actually a while ago is it um is he called jay alderton he's that guy the fitness guy absolutely brilliant uh videos he puts up online and he talks about the two different types of hard basically if you're looking at if you're sitting in front of something which is challenging like learning a musical instrument basically there are two options, both of which are hard. The first option is do the things, do the hard, difficult things, repetitive, long-term things that you need to do to get good. That's the first hard option. The second hard option is not do those things and live with the sort of basically the 
I'm get too heavy, but the pain and unhappiness of knowing that you haven't done that and you're you're not going to develop the skills that you would like to. Like which hard, which version of hard would you like? They're they're the two options as far as I'm concerned. And obviously for me, in my case, I'm. I love, the, I love this instrument. I'm passionate about this instrument. I really wanted to be good at it. Needless to say, I'm, of course, as is evident from these videos, very much a work in progress. But um, I have at least made that decision in my heart to try my best to do the work and get good at this. So that's uh, that's the thing. Stage one. Let's recap on this basic groove. This was the example. So uh, stage one was one and. And a uh, three and four and one and two and a uh, three and four and stage two is one and two and a uh, three and four. I'll play that slow. One and two and a uh, three and four and stage three is one and two and a three and four and I'll play that slow. One and and a uh, three and four and go slow. And this that groove is only an example, but go slow, program it in, build it, be consistent, be in it for the long haul, which in my case was a number of years, and that will come good. There is nothing wrong with you. Please don't uh, come to me saying you're struggling. This is hard. Yeah, I know it's hard. Yeah, that's, that's why it's a thing. That's why I've made a living making a channel, making instruction videos about it because it's not it's not self-explanatory. It's not obvious. You're not entitled to just sit and play it. Yes, it's hard. This is a big, hard thing. It's a, a, pretty, my, a, a better word, I, I personally think, a better way to articulate rather than saying it's hard, I guess, is it's a big commitment. It involves a serious investment of effort to get to get good at this thing but yeah like it, 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 in everyday policy it is hard yeah i agree and uh yeah like you're not struggling if you've been doing this for a few weeks or a few months you're not struggling with it you just haven't done put in yet a sufficient amount of time to earn the right to expect to, to play it well keep going man keep going slow deliberate be patient 99 percent of people are not in my experience they'll just try and go too fast uh go slow build it be that person and the rewards are uh, brilliant i think um listen it's easy for me to sit here and say do this do that i appreciate like everyone else who's spent time with this instrument my journey has been messy like everyone else's it's not like i sat every day and did exactly the thing that i should have done but i've uh obviously just tr tried to do the right thing and um the rewards are there and my experience of teaching people who working people who do do those things is that the rewards are obvious after a, f a short period of time you see that 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 commitment that effort that they put in slowing things down breaking them down building them up bit by bit um man it just reaps such great rewards so go for it remember that improvement zone principle of you uh, when you're going slow to fast to slow when you're very first starting learning this stuff you it's not even that is that you just just it's just showing your hands and your feet and your brain and the combinations but then after that when you've got it going a little bit start as slow as you like work up to the current improvement zone your current speed where you can hold it together hold it there for a bit bring it back down again and you'll build it from there so i hope that's helpful that doesn't just apply to that groove it applies to immigrant song everything else i've got a whole video about um a whole playlist in fact about uh bass drum technique and grooves and all that stuff i'll link to that below thanks for watching as always shout out to all the people who asked about that and keith moon for his comment and um man have fun enjoy the journey that's the whole point see you soon